you're in the business of media, of communication, connecting with people, selling anything, if you're selling an idea, a product, a brand, or a service, you should be on social media. You should be where people can find you. One of my biggest tips about social media is to think about it and, and use it as a kind of practical tool in your toolkit. It doesn't replace all the other things you bring to the table, but it becomes one more tool in the toolkit. Here are some things that social media can do. Help you find new story ideas, trends, sources. If you're in business, another way to think of it is leads. New leads, new ideas. Where should you be betting? Where should you be putting your money? Connect with readers, viewers in new ways. That is, connect with your audience in new ways. Bring eyeballs and traffic and attention to your work. That is one of the most important things. Eyeballs are the currency of the web. And you want to know how to bring the most eyeballs to your work. And then create your personal brand or your company brand. All of these. If I said to you I had a piece of technology that could do one of these four things, you would absolutely want to do it. I say social media can do all four. I like to say that social media is very early in its evolution, right? So I look at media today where radio was in 1912, where TV was in 1950, where the web was in 1996, which means it's just getting started. I, I created this list of things that I think if we did more of, social media would be more useful to all of us. So it would be helpful, useful, informative, relevant, practical, actionable, timely, generous, brief, entertaining, fun, and occasionally funny. Whenever anyone asks me, how can I get more followers on Twitter, more followers on Facebook, more connections, I say, take your last 50 tweets or Facebook postings, cut and paste them into a Word document, and then take these 10 or so words and then put little check marks next to each posting for these attributes. If you then, you should have, you could have up to 500, right? 50 posts times 10 attributes, that's 500. Most people are under 100 tally marks. Those of you, if you, by the way, have 500, let me know. I'll, I'll hire you to do my uh, social media for me. But this is the problem, that we don't think like this. I would make a case that the, depending on your business, you want to be on Facebook and or Twitter. I think Facebook is easier because it has more space, you can post more things, it has things around it where you can do the photos, videos, you can, you know, if you look at my list of Facebook pages, you can have multiple things. You can, your web page today, I mean your Facebook page can be as dynamic as your own existing web page. It can have video and photos and all of that stuff. Where Twitter, it's, it's kind of blank and you're pointing to other things. But this is where Facebook gets interesting for businesses. This whole section of Facebook pages, right? How many of you have a Facebook page which is different from your personal profile on Facebook? A few of you do that. So look at all the changes that they have made. Facebook becomes, when used in business context, very powerful because you can now connect with the, those things I told you earlier, connect with your audience. And you can do things that you couldn't do before. How do you do this, by the way? You go very, uh, it's very simple. You go to facebook.com slash page and create a Facebook page. You can do that tonight. And it could just be a place where you're posting ideas, tips, things you're working on. Your client has a new product. You can post that on there and just share that a couple of times a day. So one thing is to say, build a Facebook page. But as you might know, just building the page doesn't result in 10 million people following you. It just doesn't happen. You have to work on it. You've got to build those followers one by one by one. There's a section called facebook.com slash insights. And here's an example of the kinds of things you can find about your fans and your users. How many people joined? How many removed? What is their age and gender? What countries they came from? how many page views you had, all of this stuff that you can't easily get off your web page. And it's only going to get more and more businessy as Facebook becomes more business-like. And we can talk a little bit about how and why Twitter is different from Facebook. Facebook is, for the most part, people you know and people you're connected to. Twitter, on the other hand, is much more open Right? It's for people who want to sign up to hear when your cookies are ready or whatever. But it, it's, it's a much bigger and 
a potentially more interesting place for business because people are talking about your brand all the time. People are talking about them. How do you interact? Twitter is one way to do it. Let me show you some Twitter business ideas in particular. Okay? I would start by saying, what am I going to tweet about? What do I have to tweet about? So let me show you a couple of examples. Here is, in Manhattan, there's this bakery called um, City Bakery. And look what they Twitter. The oven tweets when it has fresh cookies. And you know what happens now? That every time they tweet, there's a, cr there's a traffic jam in all the elevators around 18th Street. People working drop whatever they're doing, and they rush into uh, into, uh, to try to get these cookies. Now, what is the mistake they've made on this? They didn't, list their they didn't list their Twitter handle. This is, the reason I show you this is so many people tell me, gee, I'm not getting followers. I say, well, what have you done to promote the fact that you have a Twitter handle? Is it on your business card? Is it on your letterhead? Is it in your email signature file? So many people tweet and never describe what they're tweeting about. It's a simple thing. Tell people what you're going to be giving them. And people will come and go, and they'll see, you, they'll see you. There's a lot of churn on Twitter. The thing that'll kill you on Twitter is if you're boring, people will not follow you. Right? So I would start by saying, here's what I'm going to be tweeting about, just generally. And this is what I'm going to be doing. It might be once, just one part of what your company does. But it's that easy. You can find that and then start talking about it. And I can tell you, with having now studied this for a while, that I believe that in every area of human interest, there is now a Twitter feed that is absolutely must read in that field. Almost as important as whatever traditional media, it might even be a traditional media feed, but something that you absolutely must read in that area of interest. There is a lot of crap on social media, a lot. The thing is, learn to ignore those and find the really good stuff. Like one of the biggest complaints about Twitter is it's filled with people telling you what they ate for lunch, right? right? There's this great tweet that I saw. China has blocked Twitter. That, and so somebody says, oh, that's too bad. 1.5 billion people won't know what I ate for lunch, right? I mean, but what I say is it all depends on who you are listening to. And we can show you example after example of some of the most interesting people that you like in other areas are now on Twitter. If it's food, if it's movies, if it's business, if you just pick any area of human interest. There's somebody you should be following on there. An one example, a recent person to join Facebook and Twitter is Bill Gates. Bill Gates tweets a lot. Now, he doesn't tweet about Microsoft, it turns out. What does he tweet about? Anybody know? About public health and what he's doing to save the world. So if you're in the public health business, you must follow Bill Gates. And he tells you, I'm meeting with the Rwandan health minister on this. I went to see this project in India on that. That's what we're talking about, that it's practical, useful, all of those adjectives I gave you. That's where you'll find some people, not everybody, but just like email, we found the 10% that works for us. We can do the same on social media. But now that a curtain has been lifted on the day-to-day -day happenings that get you between the press releases, Right between the two big interviews, you know, someone like Bill Gates might do a Time Inc. interview, right, Time Magazine interview, and a 60 Minutes interview. But in between, it was all opaque. We had no idea how he's thinking, what he's doing. So this is not about Bill Gates, but I'm saying, in every area, there's now somebody who whose life is now exposed, for better or worse, for you to get an insight into that. But the best case you can make for joining Twitter is to read through business.twitter.com, which is that first link over there. It's in your handout. Business.twitter.com. It's their 101 amazing tools and examples from companies like Zappos, JetBlue, Dell, etc. how to use this with case studies. And the best part is they have the slides there already. So if you want to understand this, just look at the case studies, best practices, other resources. Just spend some time on it to make the business case for Twitter. I should tell you that despite all this, my talking about all this stuff, there are a lot of problems with this, including privacy and other things. But on Twitter, my biggest problem are those numbers. I hate those numbers. 
Why? Because we've started to fetishize these numbers. Imagine if we went around with a number over our head, the number of clients we have, or number of articles we've published, or number of films we've made. If we did that, then we'd start worrying about the number instead of the person. And here, you're seeing that people will look at this and say, well, either that's a lot of people or not a lot of people, depending on what you're doing. This is something on Twitter called the million follower fallacy, which you may have heard about, which is that you might have a million followers, but that doesn't mean that they're engaged or they care about what you're doing. And you have to build these people kind of one at a time. It isn't simple of just throwing it up and then you, you get it. What I tell nonprofits and people in business to do is to think about what you're tweeting or what you're going to be doing. Have a plan. And then see, do you have the time to fit it into your workflow? If you don't, maybe you're not ready for this, right? If you have other problems, this is not going to solve it. Here's an interesting thing. Seven reasons why social media won't work for your company. And when you look at that list on your own time, you can look at it. It'll say things like you're not willing to listen. You don't have an open mind. You don't have anything interesting to sell. Because one of the most important points I want to make, social media will not fix all your problems. Right? You can't just be on social media and you suddenly have thousands of extra sales. If your product stinks to begin with, social media is not going to fix it. Right? It can accelerate, it can amplify, but it cannot solve every problem instantly. The great news about social media is that almost nothing I'm talking about is technological. It's all about time, it's about using all the things you already bring to the table. That's the biggest and best news about all of this, is that if you have something to say and you have experience, background, ideas, look at Roger Ebert. You know, well, I don't know how old he is, probably in his 60s, and he's able to do this and fit it into his schedule and everything else he's doing. Nick Kristoff, these people have found times in their day to do this and build and extend their brands. I would suggest that Mashable is the most important new publication you can read as somebody who is in the media-ish space. It is the FT, the Financial Times of social media. It is the, I don't know, the Harvard Business Review of social media. It is that important because it, it's a guide to all the changes around us. How to use YouTube better, how to use Facebook better, how to use Twitter better, how to use Flickr better. All of that comes from here. I read it five times a day, which means normal people need to read it like once a week or once a month. <laughs> It's not, you don't have to read it every day, but just to get a sense of all these changes around us, Mashable is the best place to go. The scarcest resource in the 21st century is going to be human attention, right? And therefore, the brands, the companies, the journalists, the PR people, the movie makers, documentarians, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, who know how to get a sliver of that human attention are going to stay in business and be around. I want to thank you all for your attention and, and uh, being engaged. Thank you very much.